Being an avid fan of Martin Scorsese and highly anticipating his upcoming picture The Irishman, I've made numerous videos on the project showcasing set pictures, giving background information on main characters, discussing casting choices, among other things. In order to give accurate information for some of the videos, I've had to research significantly and thus it's likely I've spoiled huge chunks of the movie for myself. Going into The Irishman will be a different experience for me in comparison to watching Scorsese's other biopics for the first time. Films like Goodfellas, Casino, Raging Bull and The Wolf of Wall Street, I had no prior knowledge at all of the events in the film. With much of the film's plot already likely known to me, I thought to myself, what the hey? And why not go all the way and read the novel the film is based on, I Heard You Paint Houses? I was looking to read it anyway, but only after I'd seen the film, so as to not spoil the film experience for myself, but it's probably too late for that anyway. So I thought I'd provide a brief summary and discuss each chapter as and when I finish them. The full title of the novel is I Heard You Paint Houses, Frank the Irishman Sheeran and the Closing of the Case on Jimmy Hoffa. It was written by Charles Brandt and was published in 2004. After opening the book by thanking all those who helped him make it, Brandt writes a prologue for the novel, briefly giving an account on the events that followed the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa in 1975 about how mob figures Frank Sheeran and Russell Buffalino were prime suspects and about how they were close to Hoffa. Hoffa's family felt that only someone close to him could have got to him and were relying on a deathbed confession from someone who was aware of the events for closure, seeing as though the FBI were at a loss. Brandt explains how the daughter of Hoffa, Judge Barbara Trancer, contacted Sheeran and asked him to cooperate, even privately, so the family could be at peace. Sheeran did what he had been doing in similar situations for the past 26 years, every time the FBI would knock at his door for a confession and politely referred her to his attorney. But in his later years, Sheeran sought absolvement for his sins in life and regularly met with priests and agreed to sit with Arthur Brandt for several interviews, most of which were taped over the course of four years before his death in 2003. Brandt notes how extensively he covered Sheeran's life, talking with him for hours a day either in person or on the phone, driving to significant locations that Sheeran mentioned, meeting mob figures in order to truly understand the man. Brandt made several things clear about his book, like giving his credentials as a former homicide and death penalty prosecutor among other things, what parts of the book are direct Sheeran quotes, and that the man read and approved his work. The prologue paints a different picture from the one I had in my head. When you think of when Hoffa disappeared and when Sheeran confessed, you do tend to think, why now? Is he seeking fame? Is he just a deluded old man or looking to mess with the authorities? But what the opening segment of the book suggests is that this weight of the Hoffa's family's lack of closure, the guilt of murdering his close ally, the fear of the afterlife and the scrutiny from the authorities, everything just seemed to build and build until... Sheeran felt the need to tell the truth, get the truth out there, or what he claims is the truth. The prologue is only a couple of hundred words long, but already I find myself engrossed and really looking forward to delving deep into the novel.